Oh my gosh, you can do that? Yeah, we're rolling. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Hello everybody and welcome back to an on the road episode of the SIP Podcast. I don't think this has ever been our reality, but... For those of you who don't recognize me, I am Lizzie Gordon. <laughs> And I did not bring any makeup to Las Vegas. <laughs> we didn't bring anything to Las Vegas, really, which has been a nightmare in and of itself. And you know what? Because this day has been, let's be honest, a little bit stressful. Like, we're so blessed. We're so blessed. We're at the win in Las Vegas right now. <laughs> we're so blessed. But, like, traveling without a plan is low-key stressful. It's, um... It's not, it's not how it's supposed to be done. You know what? But I think everything works out for a reason. And the girlies, they made it to, oh, well, first of all, hello, you guys. Hi, and how are you? to another episode of The Sip. I'm Ryland Adams. I already did this. Of course, joined by Elizabeth Helmut. I'm not even drunk yet. I know, Ryland's having a drink because we've had a 24 hours, to say the least. Mm -hmm. I'm going to take you back to Saturday the 25th. It's 3 p.m. I get a text message from Ryland, fully unhinged, <laughs> saying, should we just go to Taylor Swift in Las Vegas tonight? I am in Van Nuys, California. <laughs> I call him. He answers, which is shocking. Well, I meant business. He meant business. I said, come get me. And he did. And he bought Taylor Swift tickets on the day of and came and got me. And I booked flights for Spirit Airlines. We go to the fucking airport. They won't let us on the flight. <laughs> they won't let us on the flight because we're not there 45 minutes Which ahead of schedule. Which is so bonkers to me. If they're going to let you book a flight an hour before it takes off and not tell you you have to be checked in 45 minutes before it takes off and then we show up to the gate bright-eyed and bushy-tailed because we think we're going to Taylor Swift in Vegas that we've already spent thousands of dollars on tickets. Yeah. I am going to give this to Spirit, though, on the off chance they see this after our lawsuit goes through. There's probably small print somewhere that says you have to check in, and it's that shit where it's just like, <laughs> scroll to the bottom so you can move on to the next frame. So anyways, they won't let us on that flight. Then Rylan and I run to Jet Suite X to try and get on another flight. And then we realize we don't actually have Taylor Swift tickets. Well, there's the thing. I got it on like a third party ticketing app. And I guess the person that actually owns the tickets has to release them to me through Ticketmaster. And it's like... They didn't. They didn't. <laughs> and then I sat on hold for 50 minutes, hoping and praying after I booked another airline This ticket. is after we already have flight to fucking Vegas. Long story short, which you can watch in my friend Ryland's vlogs. Yeah, it will be a very... Uh, it will be something. That's it's, for sure. It's a sh It's a travel. It's a travel channel now. <laughs> Who would have thought that I would be a traveling girly? You're not a traveling girly. As a person who's been week. traveling with you, I don't think you are a traveling girly. <laughs> so because we were jumping right off the plane and going straight to the show, we brought nothing. We... We brought not a thing. Wild. I have never in my entire life jumped on a plane with nothing. I didn't even bring a purse. Because we are going to the concert where I know you can't bring a purse unless it's see-through. I came with my vlog camera and I was like, Lizzie, you better check to see if I can bring this vlog camera into the Taylor Swift concert. And she goes, yeah, it's chill. Everybody's been doing it. I've been watching the TikToks of everyone and it's fine and it's going to be fine. Wasn't we get fine. there and they're like, this is not fine. And I'm like, we don't even have a hotel room. So like, what do you want me to do with it? And we had to walk like half a mile in the opposite that? direction. We had to walk. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of walking in Vegas. Um, but, but we made it. We're here. You know what? Everything worked out. It was and has been a challenge at every step of the way. I think the real challenge is us. <laughs> I think that if you were to like reverse, like if you were going to do like an algebraic equation where it's like X plus Rylan and Lizzie equals a problem, the I'm not great at math, but we're the common denominator. <laughs> and that's what I'm trying to say. Well, I just think... While I'm not a planner, I can't commit to things in the future, it was nice to just be like day of having FOMO, literally. Like everyone on Friday night was posting their stories and photos from Taylor's concert and I just couldn't handle it. And Shane could see I was dying inside and he said, just go tonight. And I was like, I could never. And then he said, call Lizzie. And that's what I did. And you know what? It all worked out. But the thing is like, even to get our toiletries, let me tell you, we went into a CVS at fucking midnight and there was a line around the fucking building to get our toiletries that we have since lost. Do you know what I was thinking to myself? What? Champagne problems. <laughs> Which is exactly what it sounds like. As we sit here in the fucking coveted ass Taylor Swift merch that nobody can get, that we just walked right up to, didn't even wait in line for, just grabbed it. Even everyone in Vegas, they see us in our Taylor merch and they're like... <gasps> it's like they're seeing a celebrity. <laughs> 
How was it? Oh my gosh. Was I, it great? I heard the merch line was six hours long and we're like, nope. Nope, we just walked right up. And I will give us- You're like, when did you get your tickets? We're like, yesterday. No, oh, the day of. Yeah. yeah I, I How did you do it? We just Give did. us props. Like, Lizzie kept saying she goes on at 8.30. We got to be there at 8.30. We got there at 8. She went on at like 8.05 and we, we were right ran there. ran to our seats. Ready to go. And looking back at all of the footage and videos that we had taken on our phone, like I've never been more embarrassed to be me in my life. Oh, we're embarrassing people. It's like so hard what to we... watch yourself enjoying something that you think you look good doing. <laughs> At the end of the show, there was a security guard named Brittany. Brittany, if you're watching this, shout out, girl. And she came up to me. And not people don't, like, come up to me. <laughs> so in my mind, I thought this woman was going to say, hey. <laughs> <laughs> I was watching you dance all night, and you were so cute. <laughs> and she did not say that, but she does watch the podcast, and she recognized Ryland, and she was like, I love the podcast. But I really thought she was going to tell me I was a cute dancer, and then Ryland was playing back some of the footage of me dancing, and it's like, ugh. <laughs> Stay home. <laughs> and the people next to me, like, were sitting and, like, just recording horizontally the whole time. And I was, yeah. like, looking back, I feel so bad for them because right. I was screaming at the top of my lungs for the entire concert. I was, like, assaulting the girls next to us because I am not aware of my body. And I'm pretty sure I just kept smacking this poor girl in the butt with my phone. And I was, like... <sighs> I'm not really wearing deodorant and wearing clothes that I had worn all day previous. We didn't have time to get ready. And all of my no. clothes were in the washing machine when we went to get on an airplane. I don't have an excuse for as filthy as I was. I put on, no, my excuse was I put on a hot outfit. But can you imagine if that is what I had worn here? <laughs> <laughs> and I spent all day in fucking dirty leather pants and a see-through t-shirt that reeked. <laughs> so we made it. Do you want to tell them about your chafing experience? Oh my God. No. <laughs> I recently started chafing, and so if anybody in the comment section like wants to like share some like chafing, secrets, I like didn't believe her almost. I was like, "Stop! You're fine. You're fine." And she takes off her pants, and they're like raw. bright red, <laughs> raw. And I was like, "Damn, girl, I feel bad." I sent it to my friend Kate, and she's like, "So the concert was good. <laughs> That's how you know." So yeah, so leave a comment below if you um, know how to manage chafing because some of us are new to the chafe game and it is painful. And so because we're dedicated to being professionals. Because we're dedicated to making this a work write-off, we have decided to record the podcast from... <laughs> well, no. Can we, we just show them really quickly what's happening? No, because we don't want to ruin our frame. You can do it on your phone if you want. But what had happened is, like, we booked a one-way. Like, this was not thought out in any manner whatsoever. There were zero to none flights on our way back today. So now we're stuck here. Another, stuck here. We're stuck in Vegas. We're stuck at the way. Another awful. night. <laughs> And we had a whole fuck up with rebooking the room because I only booked it for one night on the way here. And then they cleaned our room out and took, <laughs> and took all of our shit that we'd spent all, all day, <laughs> that we had spent all day accumulating because we didn't have any of no, so <laughs> stupid. But the thing is, like in Vegas, it's not easy. Even if you're on the strip, like walking next door to the next casino, no, the you gotta thing. walk up, through, down, no. around. Besides that, the shit that we needed was just so fucking <laughs> stupid. We went to two Best Buys and two Target. I'm a dedicated professional. I wanted uh, my vlog battery to be charged for the vlog camera. One Best Buy didn't have it. I was like, the Target will have it. The Target didn't have it. We go to another Target. And then they're like, a Best Buy fucking five hours away has it. And I was like, we're going to Best Buy. And the ladies kept being like, are you, like our Uber drivers were like, are you locals? And we were like, no. no. And they're like, why, why are, are you going, going to Best, Best Buy? I was like, I'm working. And then one of the taxi driver goes, oh, you guys have been really busy. Because <laughs> I like yawned loudly. And he goes, we get some time for being busy. And like, yeah, we've been really busy like working girls all day. And I was like, we've eaten. And all I've done is shit. All I've done. I woke up this morning scared of getting sick from the concert. And I had four emergency packets. <laughs> I had four packets of emergency in a water bottle and checked it. And then we go to breakfast and I was like, I'm going to shit I'm going to shit myself. And at the time I was just wearing like volleyball shorts from Fabletics because I couldn't wear my pants because the chafing was so raw. And I've had diarrhea at every location we 
went to today. <laughs> and I Googled it, and an adult person is only supposed to have 2,000 milligrams of vitamin C, and I have had 4,000. <laughs> <laughs> and the result of which is dying. <laughs> but I also think there's like something with the altitude because normally when I travel, I like get stuck. I get plugged up for a couple of days and I woke up like it's normally a process. Like before I can exist as a human, I need like an hour to myself to get myself to where I can relieve myself. And then it's like good for me to go. You have something on your face. And is it a pimple? I, it, I don't know. And so this morning I woke up and I was like, oh, gotta go. And I had to run to the bathroom. But yeah, for some, some reason, it's a situation here. We've just been shitting and eating all day. Mm. Um, yeah. <laughs> so that's what we've been up to. So then we go to our, oh, I'm too boring for you? No, I'm bringing up the docket. Okay. Uh, in one of the Ubers all the way to, where were we going? Henderson. Henderson. Lizzie remembers because it's I'm going to t- name my son Roy Henderson. I'm okay. It seems very succession of you. Thank you. It sounds like one of those names. But so we get in the car and like, I tell you, Lizzie is not socially aware of her being. I am not and, at and all. And this lady like does a curb check like really <laughs> hard. <laughs> and Lizzie just goes, wow. <laughs> like so... Might I say rude like when you're in somebody's car this. that's driving you? And so we get to the location, and because we're so far, I'm like, hey, like, is there any way You'll I could just, just wait pay you direct? You don't have to, like, take the Uber fees. I'll just pay you, like, whatever fee you want direct yeah. through Venmo or cash right now um, to take us back to the strip. And she goes, as much as I liked hanging out with you guys, I think I just am going to stay like, over a hard no for me dog is what she said she did not want to wait for us <laughs> and it, we like i was like we know what we're getting we'll be in and out within five minutes which also was a lie we mm. were there for so, quite some time it's probably good she didn't wait for us and the guy back enjoyed us thoroughly so we're fine he did he or was he he t- confessed that he was falling asleep at the wheel <laughs> like a few too many times for my personal comfort and then he goes i'm gonna have to roll down the window i literally just fell asleep <laughs> Today's podcast is sponsored by Kudos. And if you shop online, you probably use an app to help you find the best coupons. But now you should also use Kudos to help you get the most cash back. Kudos is a free shopping extension that not only helps you pick the best card to use at checkout, but also doubles your rewards on over 15,000 sites. That means if you usually get 3% back from your credit card on Sephora, MeUndies, or even HelloFresh, you'll now earn 6% with Kudos. That's basically free money. The best thing about Kudos is it's easy to use. You can easily add Add kudos to your Chrome or iPhone with just a few clicks, and then you shop like normal. Kudos will automatically appear at checkout and handle the rest. Recently, I was personally shopping at HelloFresh, and Kudos not only helped me get the most rewards, but also reminded me about the hidden card benefits like purchase protection. It's amazing. This is really a no-brainer. In fact, Kudos has saved the average user over $750 per year. Imagine all of the things you could do with $750. So don't wait. Use code the SIP to double your rewards and get kudos for free by going to joinkudos.com slash the sip. That's joinkudos, K-U-D-O-S dot com slash the sip so they know we sent you. Learn more by doubling your rewards with kudos today. Today's podcast is sponsored by Dave and everyone's been there. You have an unexpected medical expense or you get into a fender bender, but you don't have the money to pay for it immediately. Now Dave can help you get out of a pinch when you really need it. Dave is the banking app that can help you get up to $500 instantly with extra cash. With Dave, there's no interest no late fees and no credit check. That's more money to fill your tank, finally get your car repaired or catch up on bills without having to wait for your next paycheck. You can finally tackle those expenses that have been stressing you out. Millions of people have already downloaded the Dave app to get the financial relief they need with extra cash. So if you're in a pinch and need some extra help, download Dave and think of it as a helping hand from future you. Download the Dave app from the app store right now or go to dave.com. That's dave.com. Sign up for an extra cash account and get up to 500 dollars instantly. For terms and conditions, go to dave.com slash legal. Instant transfer fees apply. Banking services provided by Evolve Bank and Trust, member FDIC. Well, I noticed this morning that you have acupuncture. Oh. Uh, suction cup marks on your back. Oh, so I'm good. Like my back has since recovered. Like you don't have to listen to my press tour about my back anymore. But on my journey to healing my back, right. I like did every LA girly thing in the world. That's like hot. I was so desperate because it got worse before it got better and mm-hmm. it had been a month. So I started panicking. I was like, is this going to be like prolonged something that I have to live with now for whoever knows? Like, ha- like this is your new identity. Yeah. Is this the new me? And back the new me. Girl? 
was not a good life to live. And so I started calling physical therapists. I started calling acupuncturists. I like went to like four different <laughs> chiropractors. I'm like, whatever will help me feel back to normal is something that I'm going to do. And I had never done acupuncture before. And I go there. This lady, <laughs> uh, let me tell you, she was like giving, it was like going to college. She, to be an acupuncturist, oh, she, told you a bunch of shit? she had been to like seven years of school and she like did a whole health diagnosis before she even did acupuncture. She's like, do you get headaches? Where do you get headaches? Do you get gut aches? Are you gassy? And I was like, yes. And so she gave me like solutions, like things to problem solve in my diet and the way I'm living to like be a better me through Chinese medicine before mm -hmm. she even did acupuncture. And then like... I had never done acupuncture, which was, like, fun and fine. Could you um, feel the needles in you? I could feel them when she was placing them in there. Did it sting? Like, what did it feel like? You, not really. She, like, taps you. It's like a little tube that the needle's in. She taps the tube on your body and then pokes the needle in, and then you can't feel that it's in there anymore. Like, you can't even really feel the needle go in. And... The med or it felt like meditation on a different level. It was just like a controlled environment room. She like heated it for me, played nice meditation music. And I did like fall asleep. And when I woke up from my like sleeping, I felt as though I wasn't levitating, but I was light. And it was this weird like out of body experience. But I don't know if that's because I was super relaxed or because these needles did anything. Like I'm still, I'm not like dissing acupuncture. I just don't you think know. it focuses your energy to the location that it's at? No, cause she, so in acupuncture and like, sorry, I'm acupuncture stupid. She was I like too, showing me, <laughs> she's, sh <laughs> she's showing me that there's like highways on your bodies through your like blood vessels and your veins and stuff. And so she's like, I know your pain's here in your back, but I'm actually going to do all these different spots that will Did get she put them in your stuff face? moving. She put some in my ears, some in my neck, I think think i don't remember all the points but she was like i'm gonna like unblock different pathways because she's like you could have pain in your back but i could be sticking you up here because you could be blocked up here and then that can like help increase your circulation so because i couldn't really feel the needles i don't know like what the needles did i did right. feel like very relaxed but the cupping which was is something that felt it was was like tangible felt good and i loved and it i was and like cupping just sucks your flesh so she like put oil all over my back and then she literally just like l holds a lighter that's lit inside of a cup and then sticks it on your back and it like, and I guess what she was saying is it like picks the skin up off the muscle to allow blood circulation to like increase oh, in the areas. And she was like, some people will just stick them on certain positions and leave them. But she was like, I like when I'm like moving them around and she's like, I can really see like how your body recepts based on like where I'll get things showing up like. I don't know, coloration will show up on some people if it's like a tense area. I want that. Um, it, so it was a great experience. And I just felt like I learned a lot about myself through doing all these things. I'd also never been to a physical therapist. Mm -hmm. And I felt like going to a physical therapist, she also gave me like nuggets of information about posture and just like ways that, I don't know, for some reason I felt like back posture, like leaning forward and having an arch in your back was the right way. But mm -hmm. apparently you're supposed to like, have your lower back kind of tucked and flat, and then your upper is supposed to have a little bit of a curve. Okay. And so I think that's like a large part. I like, I realized in my everyday life, I'm straining my lower back instead of using my like glutes or my thighs in a yourself. lot of different positions. Or even when I'm sitting at a desk, it's like more comfortable for me to lean forward, even if I thought I had good back posture. But I mean, I just thought it was all like very LA and interesting. I mean, I, I want to get a suction cup. We should, I'm, well, you can't go to acupuncture together, I don't think. Couples acupuncture. <laughs> so that's me. I love that you learned things about yourself. Oh, do you want to talk about me hiding being sick? Fucking crazy. I, I don't, don't think it's crazy. What's with you and your family? Like, you guys are nuts. I don't think we're nuts. That we like our privacy? What's with you and your family? That you like your privacy? I don't... Like, what do you, do you think you're going to get, like, less opportunities in life because you came down with a common sickness? Let me, hold no, on. Before you answer, okay. let me bring them up to speed. So every time Lizzie's sick, she, like, won't allow me to tell anyone she's sick, whether it be, like, the podcast audience, the internet. And, like, I always forget because in my mind it's, like, so ludicrous to not be able to, like, share information Everything. with people. Yeah. I mean, 
I guess everything, yes. But so I went on because we didn't have an episode last week. I'm so sorry. We went to Colorado for our anniversary. There's a, a vlog up on my vlog channel about it. But and I just felt like it was it was good for us to have a, a week off, off and yeah. have a moment. Um, and you did get like violently sick. So <laughs> sick. Bro. Within that period. So yeah. when I was like, oh, there's no new episode, like we were in Colorado and Lizzie's violently sick. <laughs> and she you were like, you did text me and you're like, good thing we didn't have an episode because I wouldn't have been able no, to make I it anyways. Have come, yeah. And she was like, Thanks for putting me on blast and telling everyone I'm sick. And I was like, oh yeah, I forgot you're fucking crazy and like will not allow the world to know you're sick. Well, to like the full story is I was home alone and I didn't want people who are. I didn't tell people you're home alone. People might know her just like stalking me and I didn't want you didn't to tell know. people you're home alone. No, I tell no one I'm home alone. So why would they be like, she's sick and home alone? Let's let's people move in. People might just infer by the tone of your voice. <laughs> No, but this is like a recurring theme in your life. Like you and your husband will not allow. No, it's no what, one's business. But why is it a secret though? Like that's uh, what I want to know. We don't like to share vulnerability. Like I, uh, oh, like so it shows that your body isn't like. We don't get sick. Home okay's don't get sick. <sighs> okay. We just don't do it. You know why? Because that's some weak ass shit. And our family does Cut not. Cut to the girl who's it. had COVID four times. <laughs> Oh, it was like never not having COVID. Like I probably have COVID right now. Hey, what's up? What uh, it is? What it is, bitch? Yeah, going to like Vegas is very suspicious right now. Even well, with just like common colds. That's why I drink so colds. much vitamin C, and that's fucking me. And then the other part of my brain is like, or is this the COVID shits? Mm. Who could ever really say? <sighs> the other, like, I just want to follow up because my vlog yesterday mm -hmm. that came out yesterday about how you failed me in securing Taylor Swift tickets. Well, because opening night in Glendale of Taylor Swift, I was at home, sick as a fucking dog, alone. Joe's gone. James is gone. I'm just a victim in my house. Susceptible, open, vulnerable. And I'm just watching everybody have the time of their lives at Taylor Swift, and I just start, like, scream crying. Red in the face, scream crying. And I call him, and I go, like, I'll buy the tickets right now. You just fucking, you just, I need you to tell me. You're like, I won't. The tickets in Los Angeles are in August. And he's like, I'm not going to be there in August. And I was like, I'll come to Colorado. We can do it in but Colorado. But then the Colorado tickets aren't until, like, so far out. And like I was July. Like, so I didn't want to commit to tickets. And I, I was with my family because we were traveling. And I was like, let's figure this out when I get back to L.A. Because, like... I don't want to commit to something right now. I just like feel in my heart that I'm going to make it to a Taylor Swift concert. Which is the chill. most annoying thing about this man. <laughs> I feel in my heart that I'm going to make it to a Taylor Swift concert, which and with no urgency. So I spend the entire week <laughs> shit talking him and scream crying to my best friend about how this motherfucker has no urgency. And like, I wish we could go to Taylor Swift and she and I are both crying because it's so fucking expensive that it makes no goddamn sense. It's crazy. Crazy. And then all of this comes to a head where like, I'm, I've been listening to her all week, watching her documentary, like, so inspired. I started writing a whole movie, like, about my girlhood and adolescence because, like, Taylor just, like, gets my creative juices flowing. And I, like, Joe's finally home from New York, and I just run into his, him, he's taking a shower, and I run in while I'm listening to Fearless in my headphones, and I went, I can't fucking take it anymore. I'm getting some fucking Taylor Swift tickets. And he goes, do it. Full send it. Get floor seats. <laughs> so then I drop an absurd amount of money that I don't have. To be completely frank with you, this was a reckless expense. Like, if I had children, CPS should See, be called. And I don't understand how you can spend that kind of money when it's so many months out. Like, the FOMO of, like, knowing that everyone else is going to the concert right. while I'm not, but I've spent thousands of dollars to go see her would kill me more than having the tickets. And then that settled in for me, and so I've been telling to Joe every day, I've just been like, wow, am I just supposed to pretend like I want to exist in this reality <laughs> until fucking August? And he's like feeling so bad for me, which is so pathetic because I've already secured Taylor Swift's floor seats. And for me, like whatever. So I'm tripping the whole time. And then so when you called on Saturday, I like ran back to Joan. I was like, Riley's going to take me to Vegas right now to see Taylor Swift. And he's like, I am so happy for you. Go fucking get him. We Here's kept, some cash. Because <laughs> I know you're out of money now. <laughs> and we kept questioning like, how happy our husbands were for us. Like, the fact that they sent us out with no plans to Vegas just reeks of them, like, hoping we die. <laughs> because neither of us really knows how to work Uber. And that's why he gets off 
people cash. <laughs> Every step of this trip has proved that like we should not we should be left not unsupervised. Be left unsupervised to make our own plans. <laughs> because ever. like we're not well. The only thing I pre-planned was I was like, oh, I found a confetti. <laughs> I found a confetti cannon, and so the only thing, it's like, instead of checking in for our flights, I was, like, waiting outside, <laughs> waiting outside my house to fucking pop off a confetti cannon at Ryland that no one really got on camera very well. <laughs> then we missed our flight. We couldn't even, Ryland's like, we'll valet the car at Burbank. Ryland didn't bring the key for his because car. Because it's a Tesla, and then he's like, I'm sorry, I can't and take it And then Ryland gets indignant, there's really nothing you can do, and he's like, no, sir, there's literally nothing I can do because you're the problem. Everything that could have gone wrong went wrong, yet we somehow still made everything we wanted to do. It was just like stress level 8,000. Well, as Michael Scott would say, it was stress level midnight. And midnights <sighs> like these, you know what I'm saying? And the crazy thing is, me buying them day of, I spent half of what you spent, he spent half of on floor spent. seats. Like, we yeah. still got floor seats, and I paid half because it was day of. But when you add up all the airfare from well, all the flights we <laughs> Yeah, it still wasn't... A, so, here's what I'm saying. Like, <laughs> the, the non-planning was very expensive. Like, we had to buy new outfits. We had to buy toiletries that were then taken away from us again. And we, like, still need to go buy toiletries tonight, which is going to take hours out of our life. We literally filed, like, a police... <laughs> I'm we always... spent 45 minutes filing like a police report with casino security <laughs> for our missing. And I was like, Cetaphil traveler size, Cetaphil face wash and lotion, like, and a couple of travel toothbrushes that Ryland didn't even know that when you take a travel toothbrush apart, you're supposed to put it back on itself and use it as a handle. No, I was using the handle that was just the head, and I'm like... And then he comes out like he's just discovered this, like, life hack. And that was 12 hours later in the morning. And it's like, no, that's the entire function of a travel toothbrush. Does any of this make sense? Um, can you follow anything we're saying? Or is I have vlog footage. Manic? I could, like, we'll split. tie it in together. He's, we're not going to. <laughs> <laughs> so if you're listening to the audio version, Dad, I know that's only you. Um, sorry, this sounds crazy. Anyway, I will probably never travel like this again, but I do not think I will ever forget this trip. Like, the memories this, are yeah. out of control. Uh, yeah. I, I love that we went and bought swimsuits. Went to two, <laughs> we went to two different Targets to buy swimsuits, and they came back, and the pool was closed. <laughs> and they were going to charge us $100 each to use the fucking... <laughs> they closed in an hour. <laughs> they closed it in an I'm hour. telling you, nothing really worked out. But we made it to Taylor Swift. We saw yeah. the entire show. It was fantastic. My favorite moments are still that of Reputation. Yeah. I know, like, it's unpopular for me to think Reputation's my favorite album of hers ever. Why is that unpopular? I just don't think, like, that's most people's favorite album of hers. Why but, do you think like, that? everything from, like, the costumes to, like, what she was saying to the actual music itself and her performances of the songs, it just. It like, resonates. Oh, I just love loved every single moment of it so it was fantastic i really fuck with 22 because that's i fuck with a few like they just take me back to my eras you know what i mean mm -hmm. like my teen era my fresh to la era because red came out the, my first year in la when i met you and we we were 22 Katy perry's california girl was the first song i heard when i uh, you, and landed you, in cal like i was you get to california and it does feel like a dreamland because it is like all these roads that are like lined in palm trees and it was like California girls had just come out. So I'm like driving to the Grove, which is like a very popular yeah. outdoor mall and like California girls is blaring. So it's like when I think of moving to LA, it's California girls for me. One, just because that's what was up. Uh, one year for Halloween, I was California girls with cupcake tits. Do you oh, remember we know. I used We've to shown that asset on but this podcast. But do you podcast? remember I had that costume in my center console of my car when I moved out here and there's a picture of... I think you and me in my old Camry with the bra lit up with the cupcakes on it. Do you remember that picture? No. We can't access it either because I reported my old account and had it deleted. <laughs> what do you mean? I couldn't remember the login to my old account and I didn't want, I didn't know if there was anything on it that would be like bad. Right. So I just reported it until they deleted you it. You were an alcoholic at the time. Who knows what you were I was doing. out of control. I feel like we should cut this part of the podcast <laughs> so no one looks up any of that. It's gone. Is it? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's gone. It's gone. It's gone. That was a fun time. That was a fun time. It was a very fun time. Yep. Loved those days. Eras. Hmm. Those are our eras. 
We all want to smell better naked, and let's face it, our underarms aren't the only place that have odor. And that's why I'm so excited to tell you about Lumi Whole Body Deodorant for pits, privates, and beyond. Lumi was created by an OBGYN who discovered and proved in clinical testing that the vagina is not to blame for day-to-day -day odor below the belt. So she developed Lumi, a uniquely formulated pH-balanced deodorant. Unlike some deodorants that mask odor with a fragrance, Lumi is formulated and powered by mandelic acid to stop odor before it starts. It's more like a pre-odorant. It's aluminum-free, baking soda-free, and paraben-free, plus it's pH-balanced for safe use below the belt. I personally love their bright scents like clean tangerine, lavender sage, and toasted coconut. Ugh, toasted coconut smells so delicious, and I've been whipping that baby on my feet so that when I take off my socks and shoes, I'm smelling clean and fresh as ever. Lumi Starter Pack is perfect for new customers. It comes with a solid stick deodorant, cream tube deodorant, and two free products of your choice like mini body wash and deodorant wipes, plus free shipping. As a special offer for SIP listeners, new customers get $5 off a Lumi starter pack with code SIP at lumideodorant.com. That equates to over 40% off your starter pack when you visit lumideodorant.com and use code SIP. And don't forget, new customers get $5 off a Lumi starter pack at lumideodorant.com. lumideodorant.com and use code SIP. All right, you guys, this week has been hot, but let's get into some Iced tea. Oh, I, I thought you call it iced tea now. I do, but I was confused by the hotness. It's like hot. Has it been hot? <laughs> it's spring. It's not been hot. It's been... I'm sweating. We're sweating because we're scissoring right now between <laughs> two beds on the floor. But it's been cold. Okay. It's cold right now. It's 41 degrees outside. Okay, Mama. My face is wind chapped. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get into some iced tea, though. And I say iced tea because, like, is there anything that's really happening in this world except no. for me feeling like a failure? No. Except for me also feeling like a failure. Are you really? I had a bad failure week feeling. Really? Yeah. Why? I don't know. I feel you like... You learned about yourself in acupuncture. You took your best friend to go see Taylor Swift. No, I feel like going back to Colorado was really good for me, and I mm. do enjoy myself a lot in Colorado, but I come back to California, and I do feel this, like, pressure of, like, I should be able... Like, while I'm here, especially if it's a limited amount of time, and who knows how long we'll be in California, or if we decide to be in California, like, yeah. I still have big dreams and I feel like it's hard for me to execute them and feel like I'm not and it's crazy to say like I'm not supported in them like I have had such a wonderful career on YouTube right. and I've cr like accomplished so much and there's like even if but I you stopped, want to expand your empire. if I stopped achieving today I could still be happy and like full of gratitude and enjoy my life but it is like I do feel this pressure of like oh I should be trying to execute especially because I do feel this sense of like YouTube is I feel like the more tick tac tick tac tick tock expands the the more it feels like less and less people are on YouTube. And mm -hmm. you could also argue like maybe, I don't, I don't know. Cause it's not even like a view thing necessarily, but I do feel the sense of urgency. Like, oh, I need to expand into more of mainstream for my future to have a job. That you love. I, I love this job too, but right. it's like you hope and pray that like it will last and that it's sustainable. You know, like yeah. I feel like as TikTok gets bigger, there's less and less popular YouTubers mm -hmm. and it is scary because it's like, well, that's evolution. So like all things always grow and change, you know, for a long time, people were into books and then they were into radio and then they were into TV. But the problem is like, movies. I'm not evolving with the, um, with my environment. Like right. I don't enjoy watching TikTok. I don't enjoy making TikTok. So it's like, I don't even like, it doesn't interest me. Right. So I don't want to create in that way. And my ultimate dream and even not right now. And I like have to trust like what's like, I get bogged down and being like, Oh, I need to have like a team that's out there like fighting for me. That's like pushing for me. That's like, like campaigning for these opportunities. So I don't miss out if there's something out there. Mm -hmm. But I think the problem, like timing's everything. Yeah. It's just like not meant to be. And I do believe like when something's meant for you, it will find its way to you. Like when yeah. that, when that like lady was writing that sitcom that didn't come to fruition for us, but it was like, she found me because her daughter watched me and she was like, I wrote this character and was thinking of you while I was writing this character. I want you to come in for the role. I have to like, <clears throat> I'm going to send her our Christmas script, by the way. Really? Yeah. Do you, do you know her? Yeah. Oh. That's why I was called in for the audition. Okay. Because she knows me. But I just have to like trust that the universe has a plan. I think when I get to LA, it feels harder because it feels like everyone's achieving so much. 
I really get what you're saying. And I think that there's another thing about being in LA specifically, which is a lot of people are self promoters. Right. And specifically like on Instagram where it's like pub, they're their own publicist. And I think people are really good at saying like, look at me, I'm doing shit. Like, look at me, I'm doing shit. And the reality of the situation is like, are you actually doing shit? And I've always known you to be a person who does shit. I've always known me to be a person who actually does shit. Right. And I think that no matter what, we have always been our own strongest advocates. And if sitting on the floor in the wind right now (laughs) is not a testament to our will to fucking survive while being as fucking stupid as we are and as incapable as we are, (laughs) we've gotten pretty fucking far. I agree. Granted, I have dug my claws into your back and dragged my ass along behind (laughs) you considerably. (laughs) But there are other rooms I've gotten myself into. Like, the point being, like, you just have to be persistent. You have to not give up. And you have to remember, if you start tripping about the future, you're not going to do the work in the present that you have to do to be where well, you want to be. Well, I think I get confused because it's a... Uh, sorry. And this it's is okay. like... This is like I, an advice, it's, though. But it's a weird thing to bring to the podcast, I feel like. But... He's been drinking. I've had a drink. <laughs> and... I have had two sips of a, of a I shot. feel like where I want to go isn't how I represent myself on the internet now necessarily like it's true to me and I love vlogging I love podcasting but like my ultimate goal is to have a morning show a la Ryan and Kelly well I guess it's now gonna be Kelly and her husband or it could be Ryland and Lizzie yes I mean that would be everything and I just think like if I'm asking somebody to like help lead me in that direction or take a chance on me in that direction they look at my vlog channel and they're like oh, like maybe this is intriguing, but he's not the guy for the job. Like the guy for the job is the guy that's putting in the work, doing the correspondent work over here, even if it's, and I think that's, that's where I'm like, well, where do I put my foot in what direction to get to where I want to go? And I keep telling myself like, well, I had these problems like before I was in in entertainment news, before I was doing YouTube successfully. And now I have maybe a different hurdle, but it's a very luxurious hurdle. Like I still, like I have a beautiful, wonderful life, but it's like, how do I take a step in a different direction while also doing this? Like I never want to abandon YouTube, but I do want to explore other arenas, but it's like, how do I convey that to anyone else to be, have them even campaign for me to get to that? Is it okay if I spitball on that? Yeah. I wonder if it might be interesting if you tried self-producing something that's more like that. Yeah. Like, this is close. Well, this isn't close. Well, and that's Sitting what... On, like, this isn't close. No, but, but, like, this podcast, Shane's podcast, it is a version of what I would like to do. Like, it's, it is it is a version of that, but I think everyone has a podcast, and it's mm-hmm. like, you know what I mean? And I, I do sometimes feel like now it's like... It's dark to say, but it is like, oh, everyone... The market's so saturated with entertainers Mm -hmm. and it's like everyone can create their own way with Mm -hmm. enough will and determination and persistence. It's like, is podcast the new, like, I didn't get to where I wanted to be, so I'm going to podcast forever? Yeah, those who can't do podcast. Maybe. I gotta go. But (laughs) this isn't for me. I do do. I love podcasting. I genuinely do. That's why we've gone for over two years. And it's like, even if I got a different job, we'd still podcast. No, I was even just saying before we started rolling, like, I'm so grateful that we are in a position to just fuck off to Las Vegas for the weekend without having to lie to anybody about where we are. Like Like our employers. Like we're at a real job. Right. (laughs) But I do think that, I don't know. Like, I've always, it's, I think... The odds of us being able to to excel to a certain place means something. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, out of everybody in the world, my dog, Mr. Bubs, went viral. Right. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Out of everyone in the world, you, Ryland, are a viral person. <laughs> Do you, well, I mean, do you know what I mean? Yeah, I've been able to make... And here's the thing. Like, I've been able to make a career creating, which is, like, the biggest blessing. And that's what I have to keep coming back to is just, like, gratitude. I think the part, like, that I'm leaving out of this, which is way, maybe why I'm, like, getting in my head even more so, is because I'm feeling rejection from, like, people that I thought I, like... Um, I don't know. Like, I've reached yeah. out to people I've worked with in the past, and I'm not, like, and they're, getting... they're not opening res- a door. They're not... Or even responding. Yeah. And it's like, it just is like, it hurts. Uh, it's rejection. Yeah. You know? And this is what I was talking about the other week where I was like, just fucking say no to me. 
Just right. respond to me. Don't leave me on red. Like, we have an existing relationship. Just fucking respond to me. Yeah, and, like, my previous, like, hosting agents merged with like the biggest agency in the world. I did not expect them to like bring me along with them, especially right. where like I wasn't focused on that to begin with. Like YouTube took off for me and I put all my eggs in that basket. Yeah. It's not like I was exploring and I was like, well, this is only going to help create to the next step. And everyone wants what they don't have as well. Yeah. Like the grass is always greener on the other side. Like yeah. I'm so like if I had on every Monday to Friday talk show right now, we couldn't be in, we couldn't do like, no. let's go to Vegas tonight and go to Taylor Swift. No, we'd have to lie to our bosses and say, I gave us both COVID. Exactly. And be on a no posting policy. <laughs> and so like that, like the rejection had happened like earlier in the week. And I was like dragging my feet about it a little bit. And now I like Thursday, Friday, Saturday, well, Saturday we left, but I was like just meditating a lot more journaling again mm. and being like, Gratitude, like gratitude, what's meant for you will be, you don't need to like fight for or like be, you don't need to be something you aren't to get something you think you want when you're already where you need to be. Right. You know? I think that the, something that I have to remind myself of constantly is I am exactly where I'm supposed to be in this moment. And every so often I will have moments of like clarity and affirmation of that, like creatively speaking, like I'll put something into a screenplay that the team that's working on it would be like oh my god this is genius this is great like this is the soul that was necessary and to be completely honest I wouldn't have had that idea two years previous when I was like let's go 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 it's like well you're not ready to go mm -hmm. and when you're ready to go it'll go and I keep telling myself that too and I'm rejection like, is God's protection I, and I agree and I think like things happen when they're supposed to happen like With looking who back they're supposed to happen everything that i thought i wanted so bad that i didn't get i can now look back with clarity and be like oh my gosh my life unfolded in such a better way and that's what i have to keep reminding myself in these moments where i feel like oh th everyone else is getting all of these things and it's not that i'm like I don't think anyone... Compare and despair, though. But that's what I'm saying. I don't... I'm not even that kind of person. Like, I think everybody that gets anything, no matter where they are, like, deserves it. Like, they put themselves in a position, no matter where they are, to get to what they got. And it's like... Sometimes I don't buy it. <laughs> really? Like, I... No, I'm just... Even I mean... Because if you really do a deep dive into somebody who you're like, how did they get that job? Mm -hmm. Or, like, they got that job overnight. Like, and this isn't even... This is, like, the weirdest callback ever but like on tv this morning what is it what was it parks and rec or third yeah it was oh, like chris, chris pratt. pratt and lizzie's like he was literally in like every rom -com she's like from the early audience looking back you see him in like small roles in every single movie playing opposite anne hathaway i was just gonna say anne frank <laughs> <laughs> playing opposite anne hathaway and you have no idea it's chris pratt and now chris pratt is chris fucking pratt yeah it's, yeah and it's it's just it's wild how life works and you just have to trust the process like, yeah and like and I do trust the process, but sometimes I can get bogged down, I think, because I put the pressure on myself in L.A. I, not to be the person that always brings it back to my program, but we have a thing that we read in my program, like a meditation, like acceptance is the answer to all my problems today. Right. And, I, and it's a really powerful tool for me. And in addition to that, because I, I used to feel really, really bad, right? Like I barely make a living doing what I love doing. Yeah. And I have a lot of people in my circle who are very wealthy doing what we're doing and right. are very successful doing what we're doing. And I feel like sometimes I work a little bit harder than those people. But then I remember they probably worked this hard and that's how they got to where they are now. So of course they can take a little bit of a break. Or it's just a different workload. Or it's a yeah. different workload. But, um, but no matter what, I remember that my actual purpose on this earth is to be kind and loving to everybody. That's yeah. it. And when I remember with like, with my whole heart and faith in the, the universe, or if you want to call it God, or as I call her, Ellen Ripley, my purpose is to serve the ultimate love, which is what I see God as. I see God as ultimate love. Right. So if I am fulfilling my purpose on this earth, I am acting with love and kindness to you and to everybody, even people I can't fucking stand, which is why I'm spiraling about that thing that I don't want to apologize for doing. Do you know right. what I'm saying? But you keep saying like, I'll feel better when I apologize, yeah. even though I don't think it's super warranted. <laughs> yeah. I mean, for the behavior, right. it's not like you really no. lashed out on somebody. No, but like, but the bottom line is when I think about that and when I remember that's my fucking purpose, 
all of the other shit just sort of melts away. And even, yeah, and like career is so small into like how you affect people on a large scale, I think. Yeah. But it is like, because I'm so like, oh, you got to start planting seeds for your tomorrow. So there is this fine balance and of like good. working hard and planting these seeds versus like trusting and knowing the seeds you plant are going to sprout. Maybe not today, maybe not tomorrow, maybe not in the exact way you thought. And that's another thing. You do the work and you got to throw out the expectation. Yeah. I'm just here to do the work. I can't control the results. I'm just here to do the work. All right. Well, let's move on from my... I actually think that was really cool. I think that was really cool. Like, we're in Vegas. You're a little wasted. We're sitting on the floor. This is like a full-blown drunk girl talk, except for one of us hasn't had alcohol for 10 years. Um... But yeah, I think that was beautiful. That Thank was like you. a little, that was a little Hurt intimate advice though. Yeah. Yeah. Do you want to do some cold topics now? Mm -hmm. Now we can be nasty. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> now let's shit on people that are successful. No, not that we're not. I'm just saying. Speaking of people who are successful that we're going to shit on after saying my fucking credo is love and kindness. Next up on shit Rylan doesn't care about. <laughs> Katy Perry spent so much money to extra to get the California Girls music video. That's crazy that it's wrapped back to California Girls. Oh my god, yeah. And no. we're in Vegas where Katy Perry recently had a residency. This is how slow the news was this week. <laughs> Katy Perry recently went on the record saying that she had to spend absurd amounts of money having her California Girls music video color retouched because she had a horrible spray tan. And I would like to come on record as the palest bitch you've ever met with rosacea saying like, when can we just love the skin we're in? You know what I mean? Because I've had horrible fucking spray tan incidences where I come out looking like I've shoved my hand in something's ass and pulled it out and just have shit crusted in my knuckles and all over the place. And it's fucking embarrassing and I don't feel good about it. Like I see you girlies on the internet fucking putting full body makeup on to cover up your horrible spray tans. Like why can't you just be chill as you fucking are? Like, why do we have to lay in fucking beds getting I mean, cancer? But everyone has... I, I agree with that. The spray tan is like... Uh, it's not giving... Uh, it's not giving. Well, <laughs> it's not a tanning bed. No. So if you want to do it, it's your prerogative. I think it's the it same as like you too. liking Botox. It's like if that's right. something that somebody thinks makes them look more attractive, go for it. I just feel like your skin complexion is probably good. You know? Like... If that's what you look like, it's probably The only good. reason why I hated my skin tone growing up is because people made fun of me and called me shit like Casper Nips and fucking, you know, called me pale because I grew up in a beach town and everybody wanted to be tan and so I laid in tanning beds and I have skin cancer. But everything, like, I, it's hard And then on the kid. other end of the spectrum, you're too dark. Right. You know what I mean? People are bleaching their skin. <laughs> And I just think, you know, like, I would like to advocate for, like, I, both ends of the spectrum and everything in between, like, love yourself, girl. As Lady Gaga said. As RuPaul says, if you can't love yourself, how the hell are you going to love anybody else? Oh, facts, bro. When I hated myself, I hated everybody else because they felt like they were worthy of their own self-love. And I was like, how could you be? Are there any more hot topics or should we do an advice question? I mean, there are more hot topics. I, okay, let me see if any of them no, are No, I'm going like, to do them. I'm going to do them. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Well, the biggest one that we could talk oh about is that Selena Gomez finally broke her silence on Justin Bieber and Hailey Bieber. I still... Okay. I mean... I... I don't, like, I don't know what's going on with all of this, but even her, like, asking for everyone to stop hating on Hailey felt like a little diggy to me. And... Let me tell you why, because she couldn't just say, like, Haley and I have been speaking and, like, hate in any form is not something I stand for. But she had to take the position, which I don't think was not not thought about, saying, Haley, Haley Bieber reached out. reached out to me and let me know she's been, being, like, receiving death threats and this isn't something I stand for. So it's not like we've been talking about this and we both she want to put an end to this. Me. She yeah. wants to be like... Haley had to reach out to, like, you know yeah, what I mean? I feel you on that. And I just feel like, why did you have to go about it in that way? Because then it still, like, creates this subtle narrative that you're higher than in people to still give. And listen, like, I don't know what either party has done that has, like, upset everyone. And I know everyone's calling Haley Gone Girl and all of this stuff. But it's just like, I feel like it's all gross. Mm -hmm. And I just don't like it. I agree with you, and I still think that this is an artificial result 
Oh my god, sorry, I just burped and we're so close to each other and it probably reeks. Mm. Hey, you're the one who said nachos and a taco salad today, bro. So good. After I was having tummy problems, he's like, let's get nachos and a taco salad. So good. Like, My favorite restaurant is in the Cosmo... <laughs> or no, it's in Planet Hollywood, and it's called Yolo's. It's Mexican food. Oh. It's all right. It's all right. You're tripping if you think that's worth driving four fucking hours to pick up the nachos. No, for. but if you're in Vegas, that's where you need to go. You told me you and Shane fantasize about coming back just for the nachos. Well, for a Vegas trip, but like our first stop is the nachos. Okay. Right. I love nachos that have melted cheese, but also layered queso. Just and you saying. can get that basically anywhere. Mm-mm. Mm-hmm. Not the do it the way I like it. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I think that, uh, and we've said here on the podcast before, like everything that's sort of transgressed has been the result of fan speculation, and it is not actually founded in factual reality. I don't think Haley intentionally shaded Selena. I do feel like a little bit like Selena has not done a well, great job of de I think a lot of this started from Selena commenting on people speculating. You well, know, the speculation came first, and then the comment on the speculation followed. I think she was commenting. I mean, I, I mean, I, I, I'm not. I, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. But the bottom line is, I still think a bunch of this has come from an artificial situation that was created by speculation right and, and the, it's silly end of the day and, it, and the, they're and all super rich that, super famous and no matter what anyone thinks of them they're gonna be fine they are gonna be fine and also like i don't think selena's fandom realizes that they're writing so hard that they're doing her dirty because they've now called her fat by a le- like they literally alleged that Haley called her fat when she didn't so when a fan says that you're it's like they're saying she is fat do you see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Which, and then like, now, which uh, let let me stick up for Selena in this regard. Then you're thinking, oh my gosh, they think I'm fat, and then you might believe like, oh, maybe Haley's fans did implant to my fans, and then she's getting upset not because of something Haley said, exactly. but because something that's implied, and then she's upset, and not even because of Haley, but then starts commenting on random things. And, and that's just, what like, I'm trying to say. Right. And then now her fans have done her so dirty. That she has to communicate with her ex-fucking-boyfriend, her biggest heartbreak of all's, wife. Sucks. And then advocate for her on the internet. Like, Selena, fans, stop doing this to her. And when you put it like that... Just knock it off, Maybe guys. if I was Selena, I'd be like, Haley reached out to me, too. Because she's probably like... That I don't want to ride for this bitch. My husband, right? And now I have to stick up for her wife, his wife, on the internet. And also, Selena... I don't think Justin Bieber is a prize to be won. Do you know what I'm saying? I love Justin Bieber. Oh, I love him too. But I feel like us pretending like the biggest wound of Selena's life is Justin Bieber marrying I mean, Haley. you don't know the trajectory of their relationship, how it ended. Exactly. The ebbs and flows of it. Well, that's so, what I'm like, saying. So, like, it was probably a defining chapter in Selena's life. And, it, and, like, I, and I'm not saying it's not, but I'm not saying, but I'm also saying... She wasn't meant to end up with Justin Bieber. And uh, yes, that's okay. Correct. You're correct. Yeah. But it doesn't mean it doesn't hurt to look at online when they're both hugely popular oh, and no. she sees them on Instagram even when she's not looking. Yeah. And so stop fucking super gluing her to it. Like, let her move on, guys. Let her move on. Because anyway. the victory here isn't her marrying Justin Bieber. It's her getting to move the fuck on. Yeah. I agree. See, aren't you glad we did that one? <sighs> yeah, this, we solved a case today. This Gwyneth Paltrow thing is like pretty intriguing to me too. Is it really? Yeah, my mom was like saying like, "Oh, I've been watching the Gwyneth Paltrow trial," and then I was like, "I know nothing about it." And then I started doing a deep dive into it, and like, I haven't watched hours. I watched every video Inside Edition put out about it, okay. which is like four. <laughs> and I just so like the guy saying so she was in a skiing accident. The guy says she hit him and he suffered damage to his brain that has caused his life to spiral downward. She claims he was skiing behind her, hit her, and now is suing her. And she's like, no, that's not how it happened. He was suing her for like millions, now took it down to 300,000 just to like recoup medical costs and stuff. She's counter suing for a dollar. And in my opinion, I don't think she would, her time is so valuable, valuable because she runs a very successful company. I don't think she would take the time out of her day to counter sue for a dollar. Because she's so rich, I do think she could hand over the three hundred thousand dollars if he was but telling the truth. But it's the principle. He's the the what he is doing is essentially extortion. Right. And you so, are rich, 
and famous, which makes you vulnerable to the public eye. And if you care so much about how you're perceived, then give me $300,000 and I'll shut the fuck up. And that's why, to me, I think she's probably telling the truth. Because why would she take so much time off work yeah. to counter sue for a dollar if she was lying at all? She yeah. should just pay the $300,000. Yeah. Because she can. And she's really wealthy. Yeah. Um, and that's what I think is so... I think it's important, like, as much as I'm, like, not down with this bitch... Because a lot of the stuff that Gwyneth Paltrow does, I well, think, is fairly harmful. I think people hate her because she's authentically herself and not apologetic for her wealth, her how she lives her life. I don't life. give a fuck about her wealth, but it does bother me that she sells a lifestyle that is inherently like... But to me, anything could be. Like, you could say Kim Kardashian is the same way. And in my mind, if you don't like that, if you don't subscribe to it, you don't turn on the channel and you don't tell your kids to watch it either. Like, right. your kids shouldn't be watching the Kardashians and thinking that they're how they, their body should look. Like, you should be in control of saying, don't watch that to your children. Yeah. And if it does damage to your brain, you turn it off as well. I agree. Before we transgress too far, I would like to laud her for this because I think on principle, being a woman who stands up for yourself in this scenario and advocates for yourself, even though it's taking time and money away from what you need to be doing to keep being a strong, powerful bitch, you are sending a message that it is okay for me to do these things. And it is very Taylor Swift of her, not only in the symbolism of the $1, but it's like, the fact that she's actually taking the fucking time to do this. When it's publicly humiliating for her too. There's it's video in, cameras in the courtroom. Yeah, and it's inspiring for women, other women to see, stand the fuck up for yourself. You deserve it. But I know she does put out crazy and things I just, into the world. But Yeah, I'm divorcing this from the part of her character that I'm not down with. And in the fucking trial, did you see that recently the opposing lawyer was like, you're friends with Taylor Swift, right? Did you see that? Yeah. And she's like, is this just like a bunch of girls getting together to like do this thing? And it's like, how the fuck could a woman do that? How could a woman stand in a court of law and then like say that stuff? Also, this guy sent an email to his daughter being like, I'm famous now because yeah. Gwyneth, I had a run in with Gwyneth Paltrow and it's like, you're a creep dude. And it's opportunistic. I just, I don't think she's lying as much as the world might dis have a distaste in their mouth for Gwyneth Paltrow because she's got a lot of privilege and spreads a lot of things that could be like annoying at best. I kind of live for her. You would. I would. I'm just uh, <laughs> And whatever. I love Kourtney Kardashian. So here we are. Here a couple of are. problematic queens on the floor at the win. You know what? I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode of the podcast. I kind of feel like it was more heart to hearty than ever. Yeah, because you're between my fucking legs. I could smell my own pussy and the vodka on your breath right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry it wasn't the usual video, but I think it might be a refreshing change. Or you guys hate us. And we don't care because we're just here doing the Lord's work. <laughs> we're just putting our head down, doing the work, and planting the seeds for a better tomorrow. So, in the meantime, work on your posture. Be nice to your fellow man, even if you fucking hate him. <laughs> and we'll see you next week. Follow us on social media. We love you very much. Goodbye. And, and that's, that's the, the sip. <sighs> <laughs> Toodles. <laughs> oh, no. <sighs> My back is going to break.